A safety integrity level is a number assigned to a system to determine how well it needs to be protected against a potential hazard. My name is Noah Green from Phoenix Contact. I'm the Product Marketing Specialist for Safety. What type of hazards? Hazards that are electrical, so high voltage, moving parts, if you have a motor that's spinning too fast or too slow or you want to make sure that it's not spinning. There's even sharp blades too, things that have to move up and down that could potentially damage someone's hand. How many levels are there? In SIL there is four. SIL 1 being the lowest, there's just single channel, not much not in the way of redundancy, you just have a basic safety system. When you get up to SIL level four, you have two channel redundancy, output redundancy, and the system itself is able to monitor to make sure that it's going to respond correctly and fast to whatever danger might arise. What determines what is fast for something stopping? Interesting enough, within safety there are three stop categories. A stop zero is instantaneous, remove the power. Stop category one is a delayed stop. So say you have a motor that's running in your machine, you wanna hit the e-stop, a little bit of a delay while the motor slows down and then you kill the power. And then stop category two, just a normal stop, you press the stop button, everything kinda chills. And you're done. How does a SIL level differ from a PL performance level? A performance level has a rating from A through E. A being the most basic, E being the most complicated, able to get a lot of redundancy on the inputs, outputs, and also in the logic too. Why not make everything SIL 4? It seems like that would make our systems safer, right? You could just go with SIL 4 for everything, but usually you run a risk assessment that'll tell you what SIL rating your machine needs to be. So if you have a SIL rating of 3, you want to pick SIL 3 rated parts to make sure that everything is protected properly. If it's only a SIL level 1, that's what you determine in your risk assessment. Stick with that. When you start going up the SIL levels, things get more expensive, more time to troubleshoot if anything were to go wrong. So who would we contact to have a risk assessment done? Typically the risk assessments are done in-house or even if you wanted to hire an outside person or company, you'd have a TUV certified functional safety engineer come and do the whole risk assessment for your machine. Once we know our SEAL rating, then we're ready to select some parts and click here to follow us over there.